Hey guys, thanks for joining me here today. I have a little treat for you all. I want to share with you guys my latest project. It's inspired by Gromish Health Screen. It's an art. And I want to give you guys a little bit of overview on how I was able to create this character from start to finish. Now, before I do that, a lot of you guys are asking me what type of computer do I have? What kind of processor I have? How much memory I have? And so I do want to share with you all that information. And so here it is. I have AMD Ryzen 7 1708 core processor. My memory RAM is 16 gigabytes. I am running on 64-bit operating system, Windows 10. I had this computer for over five years now. I will be getting a new one this year before I begin on a new project because I do want to push the quality of my renders for my character without hearing my computer sounding like it's about to launch and blast off. That is going to be on my wish list this year to get a new computer. So yeah, guys, I hope that clarifies everything with your questions about my computer system. With that being said, here it is, my overview on how I was able to create the art character. I started out my sculpt with just a basic sphere. I always begin with this shape because I find it is the easiest to manipulate. You can always start out with your own base mesh that you already made to make things go faster. But me personally, for my personal work, I like to start from scratch because it gives me much more practice with the software sculpting tools and plus I just find it stress relieving that I can dramatically and aggressively push and pull body parts without getting in trouble with the law. Now this character is a bit different from the other characters that I usually do. The orc's body is extremely large and exaggerated. The only way you can find someone with this type of body is by watching TV shows and movies. With that said, the more important it is to have a good knowledge of the human anatomy to make this look believable. If you don't know the anatomy, it will be hard for you to pinpoint which part of the body to exaggerate in a believable way. So whether you are doing stylized or realistic or even a mix of the two, it's very significant to have at least some basic knowledge of the human anatomy to create a convincing character. For my orc, since he is a very large guy, I enhanced his shoulders, his deltoids and upper back and made him have a small waist. The upper body parts are the main areas that I basically enlarged. Do keep in mind that when you are doing characters like this, you still have to take into account the proper proportions. Most people are 7.5 heads high, but for my orc, I made him 9 heads high to make him look heroic. The best time to check if your proportion is accurate is after you have at least the primary forms down so that way you can identify which body part you need to adjust when using a proportion guide, which in my case I used Andrew Loomis guide. After I am done with the primary forms and secondary forms of my character, I increase the mesh resolution so that I'm able to add realistic pores and wrinkles on the orc skin. Now, of course, the higher your resolution, the more refined the micro details will be. I used at least three different alpha textures for my character's skin. I found the pores texture from ZBrush Pixelogic website. They are for free, and there are different types of pores you can choose from. Having a variety of skin pores will give our character a much more realistic feel to it. If you look at your face in the mirror, you will notice that the pores in your nose will look slightly different from the pores on your forehead. It's good to study human faces in real life, but if you don't want to look creepy, no problem. There are abundance of references online. I would say that digital sculpting is one of the most fun processes of character creation. And I'm so happy that Blender is becoming more and more powerful as a sculpting tool. Now for the armor, I used the plane modeling method. Using a plane, I extruded edges to form the shape that I needed. And to add thickness, I further extruded things out. To make the armor conform to the body of the character, I used the simple deform modifier. I set it to bend option and adjusted the angle and axis to make it bend properly. For straps around the boots and gloves, I duplicated the mesh area where I want the straps to be. Then to bring them out of the original mesh, I sculpted the parts where the straps will be wrapped around the character. 
The same method can be applied for the skirt, pants, and shoes. You can duplicate the mesh, inflate them by sculpting how you want it, and then later retopologize it for a more refined geometry. Now, to be able to use a character for production, you must go through a process called retopologizing. This is basically creating a lower polygonal mesh of your existing high-resolution mesh. When I retopologize, I first make the important loops on the areas of the character that are going to deform a lot like the face area, the elbows, fingers, and places where there are going to be joint articulations. After I have the essential loops down, I connect all the edges together and at the end of the retopology process, I have a nice clean geometry that can be animated. Retopologizing your character is important, not only for animation purposes, but also for adding micro sculpt details and for easier UV map creation. Having a great optimized mesh will alleviate every part of the character creation process. After retopologizing, I unwrap my character. Unwrapping is basically the process of unfolding a mesh so that you can create a 2D texture which fits the 3D object. In order to bake and paint your character, you must unwrap first. Do keep in mind that when making your UVs, try to organize them in a way that is easy to understand and locate. This is especially significant if you are working in the industry and your model will be worked on by different people. Another thing to be aware of when unwrapping is space. Make sure you are making the most out of your space on your UV layout so you are able to create higher resolution textures that can save time and money. Once again, this is very important when working in a professional environment. Texturing the character was one of the most exciting parts of the process. Initially, I applied a regular human skin color on the orc, but later on, I decided to go with a common, recognizable, dirty green orc skin. For hand painting the skin, I used a noise texture for the paintbrush to produce more of the skin pores effect. I also used procedural mapping for creating the dirt on the skin. For a character like this, it's even more important to apply dirt and grime because orcs are everyday warriors. And so you can just imagine that hygiene is not necessarily their number one priority. I love doing the tattoo of the orc. For the tattoo, I hand painted it black with a white background. That way, I am able to blend it with the green skin of the orc using the mix RGB node. For most of the accessories like armor, cloth, and leather, I use a combination of custom sculpting and procedural mapping. For some of the wear and tear and scratches, I did some basic sculpting so I could better control where I wanted the damages to be and just mix the custom sculpting details with the procedural map details. After baking and texturing, I moved on to hair creation. For creating the hair, I used hair particle system. If you are planning to use a character for gameplay, then you will have to utilize hair cards because hair particles will be too taxing on your system. Now, if you were to use a character with the intent of using it for either films or cinematic trailers, then hair particles are perfectly fine. There are different ways to add hair particles in Blender. One is by using Vertex Group, another way is using a duplicated mesh. Having a separate mesh will give you much more control and plus it works so much better with collisions if you do decide to animate it later on. The very last part for the character creation process is compositing. I really challenged myself on this one because I have never used so many nodes in my life. I did a lot of blending, masking, blurring, contrasting, and value adjustment to enhance my final beauty shots. Overall, I must say that this was the most challenging character that I ever made. I guess I am just so accustomed to creating celebrity likeness where the proportions just stay true to human nature. This orc was a bit more challenging because I had to make sure to exaggerate the forms properly while maintaining its realism. And also, the concepts that I found online of Bromish Hellscream were quite vague and so for a lot of the accessories, I had to be a bit more creative and also do some research to make things look functional. Guys, I had a blast creating this character. By creating a character this complex, I was able to truly discover how powerful Blender really is. I hope you guys learned a little bit from this overview. And if you do, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.